As I've gone back and collected many of the games of my childhood, some of my favorites to collect were the games that bested me when I was a boy, but that I triumphed over now that I'm older and wiser. But not all white whale games have this story. Sometimes the itch of the past still lingers like a lost leg, and other times the obsession dissipates with time and greater understanding. Today I want to discuss the different kinds of origin stories of my white whale games, rapid fire style, ending each one with the story of my triumph or lingering resentment towards the game. First up is Super Mario Brothers. As a kid, I figured out how to get to the warp zone. This got me consistently to world 5, and with lots of practice, I could get to world 8. But here my progress was halted by the Hammer Brothers. Usually the Hammer Brothers appear in pairs with a manageable pattern. There are a few different ways to defeat them, or avoid them, but at this point in the game, I struggled to get past them at all. When I finally got here as Super Mario and took the hit to get past him, I was disappointed to find... Bad! It honestly felt unfair. I knew the pattern, but it felt like you had to get lucky to get past one, and impossible to get past four. It wasn't until I started collecting games from my childhood when I was in college that I finally revisited this game on the Super Mario All-Stars collection, and finally got to this part with a fire flower. Fireballs make quick work of Hammer Brothers. From here, I made it to the final level and a showdown in Bowser's Maze. Because the game had taught me how to explore the levels when I was a kid, I was able to get through it and slay my first white whale. The story was surprisingly similar for Super Mario Bros. 3. When I was a kid, I had someone show me how to get the warp whistle on level 3, but I found the second warp whistle in the fort all by myself. I could get to world 8 through the tanks and the hand traps, but I always got stuck at level 1. This time, it didn't feel unfair, it just felt difficult. I felt like I should be able to beat it, I just needed practice. After I started collecting games, I also revisited this game using the Super Mario Bros. All-Stars collection. But I didn't use the warp whistles. I wanted to play through all of the worlds, so by the time I got to World 8, my armory was full. But I still couldn't beat that level. So I hatched the perfect plan. Skip that level and fly over the next one. This was the break I finally needed to get to Bowser. I started the fight very confused, not knowing what to do, but after realizing where Bowser's down special attack came from in Smash Brothers, I put the pieces together, defeated Bowser, and was rewarded with the original troll ending of video games. Now Bubble Bobble was different. I first played this game at a babysitter's house. It was super fun because we could both play together. This game is made up of 100 different rooms. I played different versions of Bubble Bobble growing up. I even played a lot of it on my TI-85 calculator in high school. But the game was just too long. If I didn't die, I would lose the battle of attrition and just put down the game. It was so long and took too much time to play through. So, when I was an adult, I was filled with determination to finish Bubble Bobble. After many attempts, I finally got to the end, defeated the boss, and then got this bad ending? Apparently you need to beat the game with two players. So that's the end of the story for now, and if you feel like that's an unsatisfying ending, then you understand a little of that lingering itch I have to properly beat this game. Eventually I'll invite a buddy over and play through the game and finally get the good ending. But this game is still a white whale that I'm hunting for. Next is Wizards and Warriors. A game where you are a warrior trying to fight the wizard. To get to the wizard, you need to clear eight levels where you search for hidden keys and collect enough gems to get past a guard. One of the best features is the unlimited continues. In this game, when you get a game over, select continue to respawn right where you died with three more lives. The only penalty is resetting your score to zero. So there is no penalty. Even with the generous continue system, I still didn't beat the game as a kid because of level six. Level 6 is a vertical level, which can be tricky. In this level, you have to ascend the tower while exploring for the different keys and gems. And because humans were not good at designing vertical platforming stages yet, many a climb would end with an unfortunate fall back to the ground. 
This was incredibly frustrating. And even when I was revisiting this game as an adult, it didn't feel good to beat this level. My feeling was more akin to, Glad that's over. But after getting through that stage, it was a breeze to the end. And defeating the wizard finally got me that feeling of satisfaction. <laughs> I love Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins. I played the heck out of this game when I was a kid because it was a handheld game. Many a remote would have the batteries harvested so that I could continue my adventures on the system. I beat Super Mario Land 1 when I was a kid and I had found and beaten every level in Super Mario Land 2 except the last one. This game is unique from other Mario games in that you could visit any zone in any order, like a Mega Man game. Because of this, every zone is created to be your first. And then after you beat all six, there's only one more level. So there's a huge difficulty spike. Mega Man gets around this by having five or six levels after the initial stages. But here in Super Mario Land 2, you go from the last boss to the last level, Wario's Castle. Really, this came down to a trap that I couldn't figure out when I was a kid. These Wario fists are triggered if you step on this floor tile. But I missed that as a kid. And there are three of them. I tried running through them really fast to avoid some damage, but after tanking the hits, I could never finish the level. After learning to jump over the proper floor tile as an adult, I was able to practice up and beat the game. These last two are a special case. My cousin had a Genesis growing up, and I got to play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Jurassic Park there. I watched my older cousin play all the way through both games, and I had my turn to play each game while I was visiting them, but I never had access to a Genesis growing up. And when I was collecting games from my childhood, I skipped the Genesis because I didn't have one. Now I do have ways to play Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on other consoles now, but I don't have a Jurassic Park cartridge, and it's not on any collections or mini consoles that I own, so I still need to track this one down. I want to play them and beat them. But I haven't had the opportunity, so they still feel like White Whale games to me. Those are seven of my White Whale games, along with the different reasons they've achieved White Whale status. But this isn't the big White Whale story. No, there is one game that I wanted to beat so bad that I started to obsess over it, a bit like Captain Ahab. It taunted me when looking at my collection because I wanted to beat it before playing other games in the series. It taunted me being brought up so often online because it is a very popular game and it gnawed at me every time I turned it on because it even sounds like a white whale. 